So we've gone through the the document and we've made sure that, hey, everything is um, as it should be. We noticed that, you know, we didn't uh, compose the first um, and last styles for like those numbered list up above and this, uh, we missed the ULF here. And so it was a good thing we checked. We go ahead and we save our file, right? And at this point, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna upload this again to the hub, right? Uh, but before we do that, we're gonna go here to the SAI and we're gonna run this file check tool. And what this will do is it'll actually go through and, and run certain checks uh, to make sure that everything in the file is, go is good to be uploaded um, to the hub. So we're gonna go ahead and hit file check and it takes a little bit. Um, and while that's running, um, if anybody has any questions at this point, it would be good because that does take a little bit to, to run. And it's, it's good to have that tool should you be working maybe without internet access, but a lot of the checks that it uh, performs are available when you upload to the hub. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eventually once you get, let's put it this way, once you get really good at, at composing and whatnot, you could actually just skip this and go to the hub and, and deal with the hub directly. Uh, the reason we show you file check is because it's always good to have that sort of like you checked here and now we're gonna check again over here, especially when you're, uh, when you're first learning to compose. You'll see at the bottom of the screen that it'll generate a report. You'll get this nice green check mark and the report actually tells you um, what it checked for. And you can copy this text and drop it into a text editor if you want to read more about it. But oftentimes all it's doing is checking to make sure that, you know, the structure um, tags are properly, um, properly created and properly composed, that the notes, um, endnote and footnote references um, match, uh, that the numbers and the in-text references match, excuse me, um, and that there are no uh, non-SCML styles. Were you to run this check on a file that has not been refined and, and checked and whatnot, you'd get a lot of errors because it will find a lot of non-SCML styles. So that's why this is the point where you check for this, right? And this is where we start getting into um, like the checks and QC, right? So we got our green check mark, everything's great. So we're gonna go ahead save our file again. It's always good to just hit control S. It doesn't take very long and it ensures that everything um, that has been cleaned up is nice and cleaned up. All right, we're gonna go ahead and close out our file. And we're gonna go ahead and go to ScribeNet. All right, we sign in. I'm already signed in here, but um, we sign in and we just go ahead and click on Digital Hub. If you're not signed in, it'll take you straight to the um, sign in um, window. So we're gonna go, um, I have my project ready. We created it uh, last uh, class, but again, if you need to start a new project, this option's here and the, it's pretty straightforward, um, you know, what you need to fill in and how. So we have our project. All right, I'm gonna just go, I was checking this before our class to make sure everything was good, right? And so we have, it actually, Sophie gives, um, cause Sophie's asking if like the file check does not give you like a hint as to what's wrong. Um, it does, it, um, for example, if there are SEML style, non SEML styles, excuse me, um, present, it'll tell you what they are so that you can search for them and, and fix them um, if, you, if need be. Um, and it'll point like, oh, there's a mismatch of, you know, in-text references and actual EndNote uh, numbers. And it'll tell you there's, let's say 295 uh, in-text references and 298 EndNote numbers, which will um, give you a hint as to where the issue might be. So it does provide those hints. And the hub, as you will see, also does the same thing. It's almost like a backup check. It's always uh, like a double check, if you will. So we go here to our project. We have our project information. You know, we have our code, title, I have the publisher there, and we have all the other information um, that you can fill in as need be. And so I'm gonna go ahead and upload that uh, composed file, all right? And so you can either click upload, you can click here, excuse me, on upload files and it'll bring up this dialog box, um, or you can drag and drop into that um, dotted line area and that will also work. So whichever way you find easier. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and select our comp uh, document. 
go ahead and hit open. It will appear here. And then we go ahead and hit upload files. And this is just a little refresher of what we, we did at the end of the class two weeks ago. Oh, the number of the mismatch numbers of in-text references and then note, Sophie, um, um, yeah, it would be to the note count. So um, you have to have, if you have uh, in word embedded notes, you need to have, you know, the same amount of um, endnote references, which are the ones in text, the little superscripted numbers, um, as you see in a printed uh, book. Um, and then those have to relate equally to the actual endnote numbers, the ones that are either at the end of the chapter um, or at the end of the book, depending on your, on your book. And so here we look and we see that we get a nice green check mark. So everything is, um, everything's okay. If you go ahead and click on the green checkbox uh, um, circle, what you'll have, you'll say there are no warnings. Great, wonderful. Um, if it's any other color than green, you can also click on that and it'll give you um, the what's the warning, right? If it's yellow, there's a warning that you have to address. If it's red, that means that the file is not going to uh, be able to be converted by the hub because there's something um, wrong with it that needs to uh, be addressed uh, before you can convert it. But in this case, we have our green. And we can also check our stats here. And that will bring up this box. It gives us our word count. It gives us our character count for our project. It gives us the styles. It actually breaks it down to how many times they are used. You can scroll down and see we used a lot of styles even though it was a, a small sample. Uh, you may not see this many uh, styles depending on your, on your book. Although if you are working on a textbook, you should see plenty of styles uh, because there should be plenty of elements working in the textbook. Um, a textbook isn't just straight text. Um, and here you'll also see the special characters uh, being used, right? So you have the Greek small letter pi, that's in our equation, the plus and minus sign, that's also in our equation, and then the bullet, which is a, um, also a Unicode um, character. And so that'll list all the special characters. If you, for example, you're working in a, um, in a textbook that is dealing with Greek or Hebrew or Arabic, those will also appear here if they are Unicode. And that uh, brings up uh, this idea that um, whenever you're working, especially when you're working with um, uh, foreign languages and non-Roman languages, um, you need to work with the Unicode characters because if not, if you're just working with a font that is rendering, um, you know, let's say um, A, B, and C in Greek and it's doing, you know, alpha, beta, and so on, um, then what's going to happen is that when you actually convert, you're going to lose, um, you're going to lose the actual Greek, and you're going to have a bunch of gobbledygook. Um, we ran into that actually with Karen's um, project as she was um, working on something uh, that had Arabic, right? And luckily they used Unicode, so the Arabic was preserved with its proper right to left, um, you know. Um, reading direction and whatnot um, but had the author used you know a font to just render the arabic um, there would have been a lot more work to be done so uh, always want you always want to tell your authors and this will be something that we can get into when we talk about project management you always want to tell your authors to use um, unicode uh, whenever they are uh, writing their languages um, in especially in those non-roman languages and then the last section here um, you have um, your images and it'll give you, um, you know, a list of all the images or all the image callouts that are present in um, your file. So here we have that logo and um, that figure one that we removed from the Word file. So after having done those checks, we know that our file is great and good to go. And now this is where we get into the real um, meat of um, quality control, right? So we're going to go here, and I'm going to just show you the QC list. This link is um, not only in the um, composition,